Space has been said to be the final frontier, which makes the edge of space kind of like the front porch of the final frontier. And of course, porches are pretty cool. They give you a good view of where you came from, but stop at the complexities of actually taking that step into what's behind that doorway. Now there's one ascending company that can take you to the porch of the space frontier that's called the Stratosphere. Here's Jax Tranquita to explain. To see views like this is usually a privilege reserved for astronauts. But at a company called Worldview, they want people like you and me to have this kind of experience too. Their spaceship looks like this, evoking memories of the Picards and their balloon adventures in the early 20th century. A towering helium-filled balloon that will take you to the stratosphere. One of the founders of this elevated space tourism idea is Alan Stern. He's also Worldview's chief exploration officer. Well, this is where we assemble everything. I met him in Tucson, Arizona, at the massive Worldview Aerospace Factory. Everyone's trying to get to outer space, and you guys have a new way to do it. You don't have to train for G-forces. You're not going to be riding on a rocket. For us, it's about being able to let our customers contemplate the experience, to spend the day on the edge of space. Astronauts have said for decades now that it's almost indescribable to see the Earth without borders, with that thin razor of an atmosphere yeah. that looks so fragile. It really just gives you that perspective of we're all in this together. And that's a very important perspective to have. Run me through what a day is like on a space tourism flight with Worldview. You get up before dawn, you'll enter the capsule and have a seat in a luxury cabin that's outfitted with eight seats for other passengers and a flight crew of two. As we go higher and higher in the atmosphere, the pressure decreases, so the balloon starts to fill out. It makes for a structure the size of an NFL stadium, and yet it's gossamer thin. Crazy. We want to arrive at our target, which is 100,000 feet above the Earth, in time to see the sunrise. After taking in a day of views like this, some of the helium is released, and the balloon slowly descends until the parafoil steers passengers to a soft landing. You actually have a background in spaceflight. For a time, I led the entire NASA space science program, consisting of everything from the Hubble to the Mars rovers and 100 other missions. So this is really a dream come true for me to be at the start of the space tourism industry yeah. as well. Up close, the science may appear simple, it's anything but. These tables are where we make the balloons. We take the raw material, which consists of this very thin plastic, along with a material we call load tape that actually holds the weight of the balloon up in these fibers. We connect the different sections with a heat treatment mm -hmm. at each of the seams to build an entire balloon envelope that will be able to carry a six-ton passenger vehicle up to the stratosphere. Alan showed me mission control. This is our home base launch pad. We fly from a lot of different launch pads around the United States. It's about 700 feet across diameter. When the Dream takes flight in 2024, they'll launch from some of the world's most spectacular places. And a little like standing so small against the massive launch pad, a journey like this promises to give us a whole new worldview.